The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this episode are that of the guest and host and do not necessarily reflect the values of sponsors or other associated organizations. Welcome to the Parental Compass, presented by Family Education and Support Services. I am your host, Bobby Williams. If you like what you're hearing here, please subscribe to us on Apple or Spotify. And if you really like what you're hearing, tell a friend about it. It helps us to get the show out there, and it even means a lot to me personally. Choosing which childcare is an important choice. Potentially, you're putting a lot of money into it, but even more importantly, this is where your child is first getting some real social interaction. They're learning how to be around peers their own age. They're learning how to manage their emotions. Well, today we have a very qualified person to speak about childcare. Actually, the director of the child care center I went to as a child, ECDC in South Bend, Indiana. And Terry really knows her stuff. So many years in the field, she has received a honorary doctorate from St. Mary's College, along with a ton of other awards. I haven't talked to Terry in about maybe 30 years or so, but we didn't miss a beat. I think you're really going to learn a lot from this conversation. Check it out. You know, what do you look for in a good program? You want to make sure that it's licensed. And if it isn't licensed, maybe there's something in the state that's different, maybe a registry. But if it isn't licensed, you want to know why it isn't licensed. Mm -hmm. um, each state is different. Each state is governed different in the U.S about licensing, it's not federalized. And then um, making sure that when you're there, when you visit, that the children are happily engaged um, and that the teachers are equally happily engaged with the children. So you're saying actually visit beforehand and just see what it looks like? Sure, before ever putting a child there, you do need to go and visit. And you really may wanna visit uh, without your child first, and then arrange a visit with your child so you can see how your child reacts, even though that initial reaction doesn't necessarily determine if a program is high quality or not. But mm -hmm. yes, you really want to visit. And you can call and ask basic questions ahead of time, but you want to go and feel how, um, how it feels to your heart and to your mind. Um, yeah. So what, oh, sorry, go ahead. I say your child's going to spend a lot of hours there. So you, you want to make sure that it's looks safe and clean and well-maintained, but that it seems happy. Mm. What are the warning signs for a lesser quality daycare that you should be aware of? Yeah, so it's almost like the converse of what I'm saying uh, about what's good. So if the teachers are engaged with the children, reading stories, helping with art and painting, talking to children who are building with blocks. Um, maybe there's a nature area in the room and the children and the teachers are looking at acorns or caterpillars that are spinning cocoons. Um, you, if the teachers are engaged in talking and supporting the children, um, that's what you're looking for. And if kids are just kind of wandering along around, it's called aimless wandering. If children are wandering around and teachers are talking to one another and not to the children, that would be a sign of a less quality program. Can you ask hard questions? Like, could I go into a daycare and be like, what is your turnover rate like? Yeah. Or something like that. Is that a fair question or are you just going to insult them? No, that is a great question. I think I would maybe lead um, with about qualifications of the staff first, um, but finding out what the turnover is, the turnover rate of the teachers really tells you about continuity. And what we know kids need is continuity with the adults in their lives, the, children, the adults that are caring for them, that are raising them when they're not with their parents. And so that's a really good question. 
Any other good questions to throw at them? Yeah, so like, um, what is the daily schedule like? What you hope to hear is there's active times and there's quieter times, there's creative times, there's story time, there's large group times and there's individual and small group time. Mm -hmm. And then you also wanna ask, are the children supervised at all times? Uh, is there always an adult there? Um, even at rest time, children need to be supervised at all times, even if they're sleeping. Yeah. I imagine some of our listeners are hearing this and thinking like, well, all that stuff is nice, but I can't afford this super high quality daycare. Yeah. Uh, it can be like a house payment for people, the, the cost of daycare sometimes. So yeah, it can be as what, much as rent. Yeah. What, what would you say to those parents who are just concerned about the cost? Well, uh, both pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, there is funding out there, and there's now even more funding uh, for essential workers, where parents can actually select a very high quality program and receive state funding um, to help pay for childcare. So they should check into that, ask the director, what type of scholarships are available? Do you participate in childcare voucher? Is there an on my way pre-K? Those are some of the programs here in Indiana, but they come through the federal block grant. So they're in other states as well. Hmm. There, may, there may even be funding through United Way. Wow. What Do you know any good like Google keywords to search or? Yeah, help to pay for daycare, help to pay for child care, um, child care voucher. Those would be the the things that um, would at least let you know. Plus, every, every community um, has what's called a resource and referral. They may be regionalized. They're not just dedicated to one city. They may be a regional service. But if you can um, Google resource and referral for childcare or childcare resource and referral, you can talk to people that will help you find the highest quality program near either where you work or near your neighborhood or whatever is convenient for you. And they can also help you with the application process or connect you with the agency for voucher for child care funding support. I was thinking about this topic and how for most kids or a lot of kids, this is their first interaction with peers outside of their immediate family. And that can be stressful, or how do you handle separation anxiety from parents? I feel like that's a big one. Sure, that's huge, yeah. So a good program will have what's called a family orientation and a family engagement plan or strategies. And you should ask, a parent should ask about what are the ways you help the family uh, learn about the program and what we're supposed to send and do and so on. And then how can we also help the child adjust? There's great storybooks that you can read to children. Carl goes to daycare. There's Bernstein Bear books. Do you remember those? They're oh, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bear family, yeah. So um, there's all kinds of great books you can read to your child to help them prior but then taking your child there to visit, reassuring them that you're not leaving them, you're just there to see all the fun the children are having. Yeah. And then orientation, there should be a handbook that tells you not only about their philosophy, their daily schedule, the kind of activities they provide the children with. Um, and uh, during that orientation, parents can ask even more questions about, um, the teachers and first aid training and CPR and fire and flood emergency plans or storm plans. So there should be a process to let the parent know all of those kind of nitty gritty details. Um, yeah, you're, I was just thinking as you're talking, you're really putting a lot of trust in a place to be like, here's my young child, take care of them. Yeah, really. Well, which is why I guess one other thing I want to mention before I forget is that you want to make sure that 
they have an open door policy for parents, not for strangers. They should have a locked door policy for strangers, but for family members, um, whether it's the grandparents or the parents or foster parents, that there's an open door policy and that parents can just drop in at any time. Um, if, you, if a parent has to make an appointment to come and see their child, then that's not transparent enough. That's not the best place for your child. So in the very beginning, like at ECDC, parents would say, now, can we come at any time? And we said, absolutely, you can come at any time. We have an open door policy, but know that if your child hasn't adjusted yet, when they see you, they're gonna think you're taking them home. So come see them and then take them home. Don't make them go through a second time. Yeah separating from you, but there should be an open door policy for parents or family members. Mm -hmm. What about social issues? Like you take your young child there and they cry all the time or they bite you when they get angry or something. I mean, that happens. So what should you expect from the child care as far as how they handle this? Sure. So hopefully when you're talking to them, you ask them about the discipline policy or the, we call it child guidance, how you guide children, um, but what their discipline policy is. And hopefully you hear that they're proactive. They try to prevent uh, issues by having duplicate materials and having a sufficient number of adults in the, in the classrooms or in the program. But then um, they should talk about how they help children solve conflicts with one another, that teachers get down on the child's level, they comfort, they help, they, the teachers provide empathy, they then validate the feelings and then they problem solve with the children, whether it's over um, the shovel in the sandbox or whether it's over, um, a space where one child is and the other child wants to be there. And sometimes biting happens. It usually happens with more frequently with nonverbal children. So uh -huh. two-year-olds and younger, but sometimes even a three-year-old or a young four-year-old will become frustrated and they'll bite. It's almost like uh, uh, they don't think, which of course they're little ones. They're not thinking about what they say first, but it's more like a reaction. Um, and so uh, the way you handle biting depends on the age of the child. Um, if it's a four-year-old or an older three-year-old that's verbal, then you talk about what they can do instead and you help them understand that the child they bit is hurt and they should go and help get the ice pack for the child that was bit and check in with that child. Ask him, how is he? Let him know you won't do that again. But then if it's a nonverbal child, like a young two-year-old, it can be teething or it can be just communication. And then the teachers want to help figure out with that child what they wanted. Yeah. What are the common challenges you see coming up for children in childcare? So um, I would say it's probably two things, um, two or three things, one being intense emotional reactions to disappointment. Yeah. So that's when teachers have to be understanding. The last thing we ever wanna say is don't cry because those feelings are real. So giving the child time to gain composure through the adult validating the child and then, um, and then problem solving. Well, what can we do? There's another shovel, I think in the other sandbox. Let's go see if that shovel is available. Or maybe we need to put it on our list that we need another shovel for the sandbox. So then you problem solve with the child and they learn to, co it's called co-regulation. They learn to regulate their feelings through an adult supporting them through the process. Yeah, and that's something that will go on their whole lives. I mean, you always have to learn how to regulate yourself. and. That's right. And it really, what we're learning is that to learn that children can't be just shut down, you know, don't cry, you're too loud, um, or we'll, we'll deal with that later. They really need to have an adult help them through the steps of co-regulation. 
Yeah. Well, and kids will just get upset about a lot of different things, like a cookie's broken or something. Life is complicated. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the wrong socks. Uh -huh. you know, the wrong cookie. Yeah, the broken cookie. Yeah. Um, the other thing that happens with young children in terms of kind of issues is when children, we have three temperaments of kids. This is really oversimplification, but it really works well. There's kind of the, the easygoing child, there's the feisty active child, and then there's kind of the slow to warm child. So these three basic temperaments. And what can be a challenge is a feisty child um, who's very active and they don't have um, the avenues or the tools um, to cope with communal living. There's a lot of bodies, a lot of kids in a classroom and they're figuring out how to navigate life. And that can be hard if you're active or feisty, yeah. um, if you have big reactions. Um, and then for the very uh, slow to warm, more introverted, shy child, there's a lot going on um, in a classroom and they can kind of be very observant. So what teachers do is try to help all the temperaments feel comfortable in that setting. Yeah. So, you know, I went to ECDC as yes. a young child. What kind of temperament did I have, you think? Do you even remember? So, yeah. So you were more typical to, I guess, I don't know about active, but creative, very creative, where your sister was more slow to warm. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I was maybe one of the Shire kids, but you know, who knows oh. how you really remember yourself and yeah, yeah, like that too. Um, yeah. What about when uh, this comes up, when you have your child and they just clash with another child, they just can't get along. Them and this other child are fighting and hitting or whatever. They just don't mm -hmm. like each other. What's the next move as far as reaching out or doing something about it? So as, you, as family members get acquainted with the program and the director and the teachers, the goal is this open communication that happens all the time about happy things and uh -huh. what's been going on and fun things. So that when there's a problem or a concern or even just a question, an inkling, um, the parent feels comfortable and can say, we're really hearing a lot of, at home about this little boy and he said he hit him or this little girl, she hit him. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? So it's always nice to tread lightly at first, oh. ask teachers and directors for their observations, but you shouldn't wait. Um, if you're starting to have a concern, the best thing is to talk about it. Um, yeah. And then, um, in, a, in an early childhood program, the teacher's goal is to help children get along. That's one of the social goals is that children can share their feelings with one another and they can problem solve, that they can choose to play with someone or go choose to play with someone else. And depending on the age, particularly four-year-olds, parents and teachers will say, well, if that isn't working for you, maybe you want to play somewhere else not requiring it, but giving the child a cue that they can, um, they don't have to stay at this area with the blocks. Maybe you want to go to the sandbox. It's interesting how as an adult, you never see roly polies anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's so uh, you, gotta, you gotta pick up the rocks and the, mm -hmm. so we, I love roly polies so much, Bobby, that, uh -huh. Our two-year-olds in the summer, their little ECDC summer camp name is the Roly Polies. Mm. Because that is one of the first little bugs, besides ants, that you really do find when you explore in nature. Yeah, well, they're much cooler than ants because they roll in little balls. And I know, well, they are. Do you yeah. have any closing thoughts you want to share with our audience? Yeah, so what, yeah, I do. I have one other thing that I didn't mention. I don't know if it's the most important, but one of the things about children being in childcare um, is it is a long day. And so you want to make sure that the program you pick has very interesting experiences for the children, like roly polies, going outside and 
finding ways to appreciate nature, looking under the stones, uh, bringing the stones into paint, and that there's good quality storybooks um, uh, that are read and the children are read to several times a day, and that there's even field trips or if there isn't like the field trip on a bus that you can take walks and explore something. Um, and that the children are doing lots of things with all of their senses, whether it's cooking or art or science, that there's a lot of, um, a lot of hands-on interesting activities. Well, thank you for all the work you've done over the years. And this awesome. was a really fun conversation. So thanks I'm for being okay. here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terry. Ask the hard questions. Be a little detective. Make sure you're finding the right child care center. It's a big choice. This has been the Parental Compass presented by Family Education and Support Services. I'm Bobby Williams. We'll see you next week. Peace.